and I get to have some interesting conversations and make some interesting friends often because of these things. One of them is a man called John Robson that some of you may have come across, who's one of Canada's best journalists. He writes for the Ottawa Citizen and uh, other journals. And he met me a few years ago uh, because he came to a lecture that I gave in Ottawa. Uh, and fortunately, he said to another journalist who was a Christian, when she asked him whether he'd enjoyed it, he said, yes, I'd actually like to talk to him, but I wouldn't like him to know that I wanted to talk to him. <laughs> so she said, I can arrange that. And she actually uh, set up a little uh, uh, lunch group at the National Press Club in Ottawa, and I was the only non-journalist who was invited. Um, and I got to know John Robson. He has a PhD uh, in history, speaks several languages. He's a very smart man. And uh, he's not a Christian, he was an atheist. The di discussions went on over lunch for some years as we prodded one another's positions. And then one day I opened the Ottawa Citizen and he had written an amazing opinion piece on the main page of the Ottawa Citizen. I can't imagine this in many uh, journals around the world, but he began like this, paraphrasing a little. He said, the Eastern Mediterranean in the time of Christ was not an intellectual backwater. And where Greek learning and Roman pragmatism met Judaism, some fishermen, a tax collector, and a man who had a seizure on the road to Damascus persuaded their neighbors and then the whole Roman Empire that a dead Jewish carpenter was God. <laughs> How amazing is that? It's a sort of, you've had the same thought, but not put so well earlier, you know. <laughs> it takes an atheist to do that. He then went on to say, uh, and this God didn't march around with power, but allowed himself to be nailed to a stick on a dunghill and died. But his, his followers were convinced that he rose again, and they persuaded the world that it was. Even wild Norsemen were persuaded by Irish monks that they ought to lay off the slave girls and, and be good, and they did. The cultural history is amazing. At the end, he said, uh, it looks to me he becomes autobiographical and says, if I am to be honest, it looks to me as though I have to read the scriptures if I am going to be a serious critic. But it also looks to me as though if I do, I might find that the monk will win.